Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about pre-visualization. So if you're new here, I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York, and this channel is all about kind of my philosophy and my experience as a photographer, uh, working in both fashion and commercial areas, and I kind of give a little insight and answer some questions and stuff like that. We'll probably do some tutorials here and there, but it's mostly me just talking, so um, if you're into that kind of stuff and you'd like to hear some stories, uh, consider subscribing. Anyways. The reason this came up is because I actually had a question that somebody DM'd me on uh, Instagram and uh, construction. And uh, they said, uh, I'm headed to shoot a blank. I'm not going to say what it is. And what light should I use? So, you know, my answer to that kind of question is usually well, what do you want it to look like? You know, do you want, are you shooting a full length shot? Are you shooting a close portrait? Are you going to shoot in the environment? Are you going to, you know, do you want it to be moody and contrasty? Do you want to show, uh, you know, the, uh, a big soft light? I mean, what's, what, what, are you, what are you trying to achieve, right? In this case, um, it was, it's an athlete. So what I did say was, well, generally, because I'd like to give at least a little bit of information, um, generally with athletes, you might want to use a harder light because you want to show the muscle tone, right? But then it's, I started thinking about how I feel like a lot of times when we have a, a job, especially, not so much when we're just shooting, I guess, um, to do, one of the very first things we as photographers start thinking about is just like packing our gear, right? Because I think that's the, like the more mechanical thing, the easiest thing to do. Because we're like, okay, I have this job, what am I going to need? But before you do any of that, what you really need to do is think, okay, I have this gig, right? This job here. What is the image that I hope to create? Now, if you don't know, right? And if you have such luxury, then, or if you're shooting, let's say, at your own studio, then you certainly can just have everything ready, you know, set up all your lights and just, you know, whatever, come be, be wild. But generally speaking, in most cases, you're not gonna have that opportunity. You're going to have a limited amount of time to shoot. You're going to have a limited amount of space. You're going to have to travel maybe to the location, possibly with or without assistance. You know, so you got to think about what you can physically bring with you. Um, so it really isn't just a grab bag. Let's just bring everything, right? That's why you'll notice that um, photographers, myself, Seth, you, you see a lot. He does a lot of videos like this with the bags. We're obsessed with like how we pack our bags because like we want to take as much stuff as possible, but also we want to take the right stuff, right? So, because sometimes you don't know what you're walking into, but sometimes you do. So, I think well, I'm just going to talk a little bit about this pre visualization because I think it's important. So, what I would say is, and I'm not the kind of person to do like mood boards on Pinterest and stuff like that, even though I think that's great. Um, it's not my style, right? What I generally do personally is I take a moment and I just think, you know, I think, okay, I'm going to photograph a Let's say, um, pick something. I want to photograph uh, an acrobat uh, that does performances in the circus, right? Let's say Cirque du Soleil type person, right? So I'm hired to photograph this person, and so now I need to make a photo of them, and I, now I have to decide. Well, first of all, I'm going to immediately think, what are the restraints before I start with my brain go crazy because I don't want to come up with a million good ideas I can't use, right? So... You know, they might say to me, oh, okay, well, you're going to, um, you know, actually, um, you know, she is, she wrote a book and you're going to be photographing her, you know, yeah, at, uh, in a hotel lobby, right? That's going to limit versus, oh, well, you're going to be photographing backstage or in the, uh, you know, the show area um, when the show is not going on, right? That, those, that changes my shot dramatically, right? Uh, what I'm trying to achieve. Maybe I'm going to just make a, you know, if I, in the first case, a hotel lobby, wrote a book, you know, I'm probably going to immediately go to the idea of, okay, safe would be just to make a simple portrait, right? But then I'm thinking, well, this is a Cirque du Soleil person. They can probably do all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, what's the hotel? Now I'm going to Google the hotel and see what the lobby looks like. Maybe there's something in the lobby that I can use for the person to stand on or pose with or whatever to be really interesting. And I'm going to start thinking about, okay... Um, this is my like, basic concept, right? This is kind of what I want to do. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take the person and I'm going to, let's say there's a fountain. 
I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them on the edge of the fountain, uh, you know, in, in a pose or whatever, you know, in some kind of a pose. I'm going to do a little more Google searching and I'm going to see if I can find some images of this person from the show so I have an idea of what they can do. I'm also going to talk to the publicist or whoever I'm shooting for and make sure that what they're going to be wearing, right? Are they going to be in costume? Are they going to be in regular clothes? And I might decide that it's actually cooler if they're not in the costume, right? If they're in, like, regular clothes, standing on the edge of the fountain, on their tiptoes, with their leg up over their head in some kind of cool pose, right? This might be the shot I'm visualizing, right? Once I have all that, then I'm going to say, okay, well, how would I light that? You know, and I'm going to take into consideration, okay, I'm going to be in a hotel lobby. Are they going to shut down the lobby for me? Probably not, but I can usually section off an area for a small amount of time, right? Which means that I want to bring something that's going to be relatively portable. Um, you know, I may or may not have power. And again, you can go ahead of time and find out. So maybe possibly I'm going to use, uh, you know, uh, uh, portable flashes with, with battery operated flashes or whatever. Or maybe if I'll find out the video, I'll power up, plug stuff in if I felt like I needed it. You know, I'm probably not going to use like my, my hot lights, even though I might use my dramatic hot lights, uh, you know, my dados and stuff, if I could definitely plug in and if I was shooting, let's say, backstage, I might certainly use that, right? Because here's a performer and they're going to be in costume and having the, the cool, like, stage light look might work. But for this shot, right, the one I'm, we're making right now, that doesn't work, right? So what am I packing, right? I'm packing something small. I'm going to want to control the light, probably, right? But again, it comes down to what I want it to look like. If I want it to have this big swath of light, like she is... Uh, just there and, and making it look as natural as possible, I might get a big box and back it up and, or a scrim gym and shoot light through it and make it kind of wash the area with light. If I want to, again, spotlight the person, I might use a smaller source. I might use like a, a strip bank with a grid or I might use, uh, you know, a small soft box or I might use just grids themselves on, on, on her, you know. I might silhouette her, you know. There's a lot of things that we could do and I'm going to come up with some basic ideas, right? Some basic lighting ideas. And from there... I'm going to then pack my bag, right? Some of them I may immediately eliminate because they can't happen because I know I only have so much time or whatever. Some of them I might eliminate because, uh, you know, maybe the publicist will say no if I throw some ideas out. But I want to have several ideas in my bag because the other thing is when you get there to make a photo of somebody, a portrait especially, you know, they're, they have some input, right? you, know, you got to convince them to do this. I mean, if I show up there and I'm like, oh, I have this idea of you doing this, you know, cool pose with your leg up and this and that on the fountain, you know, they might say, oh, no, I don't want to do that. And now, you know, I bet having some other ideas, too. So that's kind of your, um, your baseline there. So the pre-visualization pre is really, really important. You can be good, and it's actually a great skill to have, at just, like, picking shots off when you, when you get there. Um, you know, just seeing stuff and being like, okay, this is the shot. But if you're hired and you're at a, a, you know, more of a commercial professional level and you're hired to make a portrait of somebody and you know who that person is and you have some information on them, you really want to go into it as prepared as possible. And that's where this comes in. And again, you don't have to Pinterest board stuff. I mean, you can, once you have the idea in your head, you could start Googling similar images because sometimes that helps to show the person, um, you know, what you're, what you're going for. Uh, but uh, I don't go that far. I generally just have an idea, you know, um, and even if I do find images online that I like, I do very rarely show them to, to the person because we almost never can make the exact image. And uh, I don't want them to be like, well, this isn't what you're going for. I'd be too focused on that because right? I want them to be them. So hopefully that's useful. Um, again, I think it's important to pre-visualize as much as possible. Um, there's a lot of skills that we have as photographers. You're, you're, you want to plan, but you also want to be ready for anything, right? So all those things work together. Um, and anyways, uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Um, let me know in the comments below, like how you guys prepare for a shoot. Like what is your standard kind of uh, process of preparing? Um, and uh, if you have any other questions or ideas you guys want me to talk about, let me know, put them in the comments. Um, and I'll see you next time.